Oh. Hello, my name is Josue Peralta. I'm here joined today by my sister Abby and my buddy Mike. How are you guys? Good. <laughs> Uh, we have a special guest in the studio today. Her name is Angelica Luna. Uh, she is off camera right now, but she's spending the afternoon with us, and I'm pretty glad that she's doing so. Another girl in the studio. That's right. <laughs> um, one question for you all. Uh, what's one moment you wish you could relive? Mike, let's start with you. Well, <laughs> um, I would say... Uh, there's a lot of things that I probably could go to, okay. um, but when I was in boot camp, my last day of boot camp, we, um, or the second to last day, I keep saying that, I don't know why, but it was the second to last day and we had our graduation and um, before we did like the actual ceremony, we were all in our uniforms, we did like a little moto run or we were going to, so the DIs. They had us information on the parade deck. DI means drill instructor. Drill instructor. Um, and, you know, by the way, this is the first time I haven't, I've been away from my family and my friends for, you know, a long period of time. You know, it's three months uh -huh. uh, boot camp is. And so, you know, we're all super excited. You know, it'd been a tough three months. There's a lot of tears, crying, uh -huh. you know, and just misery and stuff. So, wow. you know, the last week we were all very much excited because we knew like yeah we're gonna get out of here finally and we we're gonna get to see you know our our you know our folks and stuff and so um we were information to do the motor run we're in our pt gear our like you know little shorts and our green shirts you know stuff that we work <laughs> out in and so we're information and then you know we know there's people there um the families or whatever i we were information so we didn't look around to see but yeah um the di he tells us to like you know uh, stand at attention or stand at uh yeah stand at attention and then make a right face and then i right face and then my mom and my sister are right there Aww. and i just remember her eyes she's like whoa That's so nice. that was the first time i'd seen them since i left and you know wow. i yeah. wasn't expecting that but it was just like a very exhilarating moment i've never felt anything like that before to be you know away and it was just three months it doesn't sound like a lot but i mean like it's a no long contact time. you know yeah, there's no yeah. contact no texting yeah. no phone calls like there was some letters but you know it's not it's not, not the same, not the same. same. so mm -hmm. you know to see my my uh my my um my family and stuff that was that was one of the best moments yeah. i can remember wow. that is pretty great and then <sighs> You know, I, it, it's, the second one is a close second uh, would be my birth. Oh, just the close <laughs> second? <laughs> Do you miss your doctor, Michael? <laughs> the Being, first woman you saw? The miracle of life cannot be <laughs> under uh, appreciated. Underestimated. Right? <laughs> underestimated. <laughs> right? Everyone should get to experience that. <laughs> Jesus says we have to be born again, right? No, I'm talking about physical rebirth. No, I know, but... Like <laughs> <laughs> no, just play. That would be terrible. It's terrible, terrifying experience. <laughs> oh my goodness! What's one moment you wish you could relive again? For me, it's back when we were still in Dominican Republic, and I think I was five, um, and we were about to come to the states. Um, I learned that after we came, but um, I remember I was running through the beach like hair all crazy just like happy and laughing no. and um to this day it's like one of my only memories from dominican republic since i came so little um but it's one of those that like i just close my eyes and i think about it it's like my happy place so i just wish i could relive it um just to like you know get more tips as to how to replicate it today i like that do, do you do you think of that often actually Whenever I'm sad, sometimes, like, I just, you know, like, close my eyes and go back to the happy place, and it just kind of centers me, kind of like a grounding moment for me, so. Wow. Yeah. For me, um, it's, uh, it doesn't involve family, I guess, like you guys. Uh, I was, it, this was in 2020. Um, I remember that I had started my business in 2018, and I was dead broke for the first two years. And then all of a sudden, the pandemic came, and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the best oh, thing that ever happened in my business. Yeah. And that sounds morbid to say. But no, I, I remember I was, um, I just had like real money for the first time, and I decided to just go on a six week trip. And on this trip, I, I, I just remember 
Um, I was in the middle of Arizona at one point, and it was part of the desert where you couldn't see any lights anywhere. So the stars were just stupidly like bright and mm. you could see everything cool. um and i just remember because it was so desolate um i mean it was a little scary at first but then i just kind of mm-hmm. felt wowed by god's presence um a- a- almost as if he's like hey l- like if i can hang those up there like i can take care of you and that yeah. was a really cathartic moment for me because here i was in the middle of you know beautiful place america at night and i was actually seeing what was it um uh, what do you call it? The Milky Way. You can actually see it. Oh, and nice. um, I had taken a class to uh, to see, like, uh, to be able to to identify the different um, uh, Orion, uh, the, the different Dipper. planets, etc. Constellations. And yeah, and the constellations. Um, and it was just like a moment where I just like literally talked to God out loud in the middle of the desert. And I remember just setting up my tripod and thinking, like, man, like. God really did take care of me, and here I am where, you know, just a year ago, just a couple months ago, I didn't think I'd be here. And then, you know, fast forward to today, my business more than tr- tripled from then, and, you know, it's just it's, it's just a constant reminder where I think back to that moment, and I just think, like, he can take care of me mm-hmm. in the middle of darkness, in the middle of wherever I am, mm-hmm. and that felt good. Isn't it amazing <laughs> how really nature brings us closer to God and creation? Speaks of God's love for us. Amen. So I'll be preaching on that next Sabbath if anybody wants to to come. <laughs> We're all preaching on the same Sabbath. That's a so good point. Um, we can't. So, do you guys know what you're going to preach on? Yes. Okay, me too. So I'll start. Um, I'm <laughs> preaching on Samson. Doc? I am preaching on sexual abuse. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's very very. That's, that's heavy. Uh, yes, so heavy. Gonna and then Mike, <laughs> you're seat. preaching on on what? Just creation and how we can learn about God from creation. Nice. Go look at the creation story. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just been on this nature trip. My last three sermons have all been well, yeah, about Well, yeah, last like, time you nature. said the other one was about trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the other one was about lions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so now it's all of it put together? Kind of. <laughs> okay. I don't know why that's so funny. Stop laughing. I don't know either. <laughs> you just... Gave me a great story about how you were out in nature thinking about God. And I'm going to preach on and it. And Michael's going to preach on the greatness of it, know. okay? Are you going to just... wear your suit? Just chill out. All right. <laughs> Are you going to wear your suit, Mike? No. Is, do you see how hot it is today? Oh, of course come on. not. Okay. Too okay. Hot, okay. Hot Let's circle back. Okay. Whatever. So last week... Uh, in part one, we uh, kind of just started with establishing the question and setting the and, and, and setting the mood on why discussing mental health in the context of dating is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about the different ways in which you know we could uh, the steps we could take to um, begin to. Uh, address certain things so we Mm -hmm. talked about going to god first we talked about going to a mental health professional we also talked about spending time with yourself and then um kind of the importance and and then we also talked about um when you kind of take those steps some things to keep in mind um today in i guess our part two um we want to focus a little bit more on now that you kind of have made consciousness of certain things we want to talk about doing the work um first we'll talk about doing the work internally then we'll talk about doing the work from your past and then we'll finish with doing the work uh, as it relates to your relationships um starting with um i should say starting with doing the work uh internally one thing that i i guess i would put out there is to address your issues head on a lot of times we can identify issues but then we try to avoid them by going to vices by going Mm -hmm. to things that numb us instead of actually going to the root of the issue and there and thus time can pass on and we can be like well i keep struggling with the same things and i'm trying but in reality you know dealing with the symptoms does not deal with the root cause so by addressing certain issues head on we can begin to actually you know make progress in that so I'll, I'll 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 give you an example um when it comes to me and like i like i mentioned last week how i have issues with the minutia of life um when it comes to okay so if i were to put that to work um the the, the nine to five schedule i hate it 
I it's just it. it just doesn't work for me. Um, so one thing that I kind of began to notice was that I would do a little bit of work or what was required, and then I would try to find something to to console me for you know suffering for the for you know for an hour or two, <laughs> or or whatever it was, um, and then I would kind of just r- repeat those patterns, but. Um, at the same time, I would realize that when it came to other work that I did like, whether it was editing pictures or whether it was designing a certain type of website, I would enter the flow state uh, kind of like really easy to where I could sit down at 9 p.m. And next thing I know, it's 6 a.m. and the birds are chirping and I didn't, rea- and I didn't realize, uh, what do you call it, the passage of time. So what I had to do was sit myself down and negotiate and be like, hey, listen, you're being obnoxious here. You're not getting nearly enough work done that you need to get done. You need to plan around, you know, or at least for me, what worked was planning around um, my flow states Mm -hmm. so that I could do the work that was that I hated doing, but that I could, you know, was I going to say, um, not keep putting it off and keep putting it off to where then I would have to sit down for, you know, pull pull a pull an all nighter or pull uh, an all day or and all nighter, which is absolutely horrible. Um, but had I not addressed I had on, I I did, I wouldn't have the business I would have here. Um, and to give you just another quick story, I have uh, issues with perfection a lot of times. Um, I I was laughing with myself and I was telling Michael uh, when we went to a water park this past weekend how, um, like I asked him, did you notice me stuttering through the episode? And he's like, well, no. And that's one of the things that kind of stopped me from doing the podcast earlier on. We're our own worst critics. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, is so true. Yeah. I get you. Like, it, it, it was so uh, weird for me to edit it, seeing and, and just kind of uh, mm-hmm. seeing myself stutter through my points and stutter through what I'm going to say. Yeah. And that mentality um, kept me away from getting bigger contracts because I was afraid that, oh man, like maybe I'm not as good as the other guy in video. So I'm not even going to pitch my stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm just not even going to try. But it wasn't until I kind of like, again, I sat myself down and I was like, man, you are just being a coward right now. The straight up being dumb about this. Mm -hmm. You need to actually confront this and move past it because if you don't, your business is going to suffer and you're going to suffer. And the only person that you have to blame is you being scared like really like 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 do you want this to be your legacy and i and i kind of just did it scared um and it turned out good (laughs) which which surprised me Mm -hmm. um and and that's kind of a theme that i started to notice was that the more that i did it scared and the more that i did things head on the better that um i kind of uh came upon and um, found myself fi- 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 finding better results. Have Have you guys ever experienced something like that, where where you were avoiding something internally that had you just taken it head on, you would have solved yourself a lot of headache? Oh, definitely. I think like um, like for me, like well, before you can even like take something head on, you have to like figure out what the issue is. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, I think a lot of guys and, and me, and I'm, you know, I like being uh, what's the word? Um, pretty transparent mm-hmm. on here. Um, you we know, appreciate lust, that. Lust has been a big, you know, issue for a lot of guys, and especially, you know, me. I've also been in that. Um, but like in my own like personal struggle, you know, like everybody wants that, you know, that 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 quick fix, right? Yes. I think uh, our society is kind of based around, you know, like the fast fix, right? You know, mm-hmm. like. I mean, even like just on a daily fast food, basis, right? like fast food, you know, wanting stuff right away. You know, no one really ever wants to put in the work as, you know, the topic Instant is gratification. doing the work, instant gratification, or, you know, like even in our medical fields and stuff like that, you know, we are heavily, you know, into like medication and medicine and stuff instead of like the the uh natural holistic approach to things or mm. you know the lifestyle changes that are the root causes of a lot of our issues mm-hmm. um and for me when it came to lust you know i found out that you know my issue yeah it was lust but it's not like that was you know where i like just started at right like for me i found out that my issues with lust for one it was a spiritual issue you know i always mm. found myself yeah. you know not praying as much, not studying as much, not being involved in ministry as much, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. when you allow your mind to, 
you know not be occupied you know Wonder. satan can take it and or you know temptations are you know more easily noticed mm -hmm. what's the right? saying there uh which is yeah, an empty mind that uh, which is like the devil's workshop yeah oh, okay. there it is <laughs> <laughs> i just know it in spanish see <laughs> 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 um but yeah like i found out for me it was uh first a spiritual thing but it was also a feeling of hopelessness because mm. oh wow you know like that's real I've said before you know haven't really been in ever uh, a long-term relationship yeah. you know yeah. um, gone out you know done things i've said you know over the last few episodes you know the girls i've always wanted they've always been somewhere else or you know mm -hmm. can never really have the time to connect so mm -hmm. you know that's kind of where i'm at and so you just kind of get into that feeling of hopelessness well i'm never going to find anybody so let me just you know indulge sink myself. into that yeah. indulge into that you know whatever it's just, and 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 that's what the issue really was um and it stemmed first and foremost from you know not being in the word because you know god tells us that we're not alone right and that god has plans for us and until i like accepted it and realized that and i'm not saying i have completely you know figured out you know or not figured out um completely you know stop struggling with stuff you know i still you know struggle um but i know what the issue is mm -hmm. it's a lack of connection with god that feeling of loneliness right. and hopelessness right. that causes me to go down into that pit of and how did you lust. take that head on well you know uh reconnecting with god praying yeah. you know studying the word and accepting you know where i am in life because you know we kind of already talked about how you know we're always trying to or it's easy to like compare ourselves with people mm -hmm. especially on social media you know we see everybody doing That's this true, everybody yeah. doing that, and in relationship stuff and you think you're missing out on something when in fact no you're not you know um this is just you know the world we live in is not always fair everybody has different circumstances different places they're coming from and for me you know i want to go to medical school that's also a big chunk of you know my time so mm -hmm. it's just like you know i have to realize where i'm at as well yeah and you know allow god to you know um bring me to where he wants me to be i like yeah. that and i think uh you know once i accepted that you know the, the struggles with lust started to you know dissipate dissipate and it's still something that i have to work on but you know jesus said like if you you know it's not just enough to or it, it's not that you're committing adultery like if you you know when he talked about the law mm -hmm. he said even if you look upon a woman with and, lustful and eyes with lustful eyes that is still a sin if you already committed it yeah. starts like the, the the issues start way before you get to the physical act you know it's mm -hmm. a mentality right. it's right. it's, it's, it's funny your mind you funny you say that because actually that's how it works a lot of the times you just have to think something and your brain thinks we'll sometimes follow. you already did it so mm -hmm. that's why like sin sometimes like god says if you just look at a woman you know you already committed sin because in your mind you're already doing it exactly because your body does not know how to distinguish between a thought and an action exactly yeah it's, abby um yeah. what's uh one example in which you've uh kind of addressed an issue internally head-on that you can think of off the top of your head yeah um so before I get into my story, um, when I always think of doing the work internally in that self-work, I always think of AA and Al Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, you know how the first step is to acknowledge you have a problem, which is the if you don't do that, you can't fix it, right? Right. Um, and a lot of the times that internal work does is not necessarily something that you purposely um, intended to do like for example some stuff we stumble upon like lust or something like that but there's some internal work that's just some stuff we carry on our inside like depression um but for me um i know personally i deal with a lot of subconscious things that i'm not conscious about because my mind just put them in the in my unconscious because of all the health issues i had okay and um something that it wasn't until very recently um and my you know josh dad had a lot of health problems recently mm -hmm. and he had to go to the hospital in and out and mm -hmm. um i noticed that i didn't like going to the hospital with him and like 
at one point it was just getting obnoxious he was just going a lot and he wasn't actually doing the work <laughs> of getting better he was just going for a quick fix um but i noticed that i don't like going to the hospital like when i go to the hospital i was able to pinpoint that it's like almost i dissociate in a way that like I, I am there i am there i can answer you i can do all these things but my mind becomes numb numb to wow. where i am and um it wasn't until one certain time where i had to go with him and now and then i realized the state that i'm in and i'm like oh wow like i dealt with a lot of these stuff when i used to work at the rogers behavioral health and um i was able to do the work in the sense of like sitting down and journaling all the all these things of like what am i feeling yeah and why is it this way and um and kind of like giving myself grace because sometimes I'd be like, well, I, I shouldn't be feeling this way. This is my family. Like, you know, you got to go to the hospital. You Man gotta up. Be feeling that compassion. And so it's like I had to give myself that grace of like, hey, like this is something that's from your past that you had to acknowledge. And it's going to be hard still going to the hospital. But now that I'm more present and conscious about it and I was able to put it on paper what I was actually feeling. Wow. I was able to um, confront it. I wouldn't say it's overcome like completely, but it's some. It's not an issue as to where before I wouldn't know what is going on. It's like now I know what is going on. And if it does happen again, and if I have to go to the hospital, obviously we live in a world that's very dangerous. And, you know, you may end up there. I may have Either to go to, to the hospital again. Or et cetera. <laughs> um, I can I know what kind of what to do um, in those states so that to keep myself present and not feel guilty, but rather give me that grace. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I mean, just to kind of circle back and just to to just put this out there and make sure that we all realize is that baby steps are still steps. Yeah, so are. when it comes to, like you said, l l like I was saying, recognizing the problem, even though we have to address it head on the baby steps that, that you take there are worth their weight in gold because mm -hmm. what that does is that gets that changes your mentality from one of oh i'm a victim to this to oh i'm one that can overcome this through the grace of god and through different tools that i have in my arsenal does that make sense yeah. um so like to kind of put it back to my example um i had to force myself to do video badly or what i thought was bad to get to a point where I had to just accept that, okay, it may look bad to me, but when the client sees it, they're enamored with it and they think mm -hmm. it's great. So even though I don't feel it internally, the baby steps that I took of buying mm -hmm. the camera, of pressing record and going through the specific motions, even though internally I was thinking, man, this is gonna suck. Yeah. Once the end product came out and they're like, oh, they liked it. It's like, oh, okay. But had I not taken that head on and kind of done it while scared, I wouldn't have gotten there. And I, th mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that, uh, you know, is so hard for people because it, it is harder to, you know, peel back the layers and, you know, willingly look at the, the root causes of, you know, yeah. issues or personal things you have because it's not like it's, it's easy to just gloss over it, you know, and I think, right, I right. think most people, you know, we get into that, you know, that that type of man mindset or mentality where you know they're okay with with that you know they're they mm -hmm. they're fine but you know the dangerous thing about that is it's not you're not just going to stay there things are going to get worse yeah. you know you're you're not going to be progressing and then if you have like habits that are you know that that that'll you know i don't know what's yeah. what's the thing that aren't healthy or conducive that aren't to healthy your and that will continue to lead you down you mm -hmm. know a wrong path um you can definitely you know put yourself into a really bad situation agreed you yeah. know and so that, that i think that's why a lot of people including myself you know just want to just like stay on the surface level and you know just get the quick fix but you know and trying but peeling the layers back mm -hmm. that's hard that's the easy stuff to to gloss over it oh yeah once you start peeling you realize you get it scared. gets harder before yeah. it gets better right yeah and right. you're saying you know you're like oh man you know this is gonna be bad and mm -hmm. stuff like that 
Um, I remember there's an old saying. Um, I don't know how old it is, but I heard I heard it from <laughs> Wintley Phipps on a <laughs> music video, that? and he was talking about uh, like his grandma or some old lady um, <laughs> said, said that you can't climb the smooth side of a mountain. You have to climb the rough side. Mm. That's deep. <laughs> yeah, you got to <laughs> climb the rough I, side. You couldn't climb I heard mountain a joke it saying like. Um, like instead of calling someone dumb, he's like, "Man, that guy has a smooth brain." <laughs> that is so. Mean. That's actually that's a good insult because that's the more wrinkles, it's it so is insulting. insulting. That's my point because like the more wrinkles that 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 are there, the more space for memories. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly from yes. Psych. Um, but now tying this into dating and how doing the work internally applies to dating, I feel like. Addressing issues that pertain to, um, what do you call it, to yourself, like knowing your triggers, addressing that head on will help you make better decisions when it comes to choosing the person that you date. Yeah. It'll, it'll give you the, the go ahead to, even though, let's say someone is showing you attention, and then, but, but you know deep down that you, know, you guys don't click or what have you, you're not going to act from a place of weakness where you're like, okay, well, maybe this is the only girl that's ever going to like me mm-hmm. or something like that. So then you give yourself permission to be courageous and address it by saying, hey, you know what? I'm I'm a fan of our friendship if that's the case. But when it comes to, you know, dating or what have you, that's just not for us. You know, that that's just not in the cards for us. Yeah, and I would say that knowing yourself is the greatest thing you can do um, apart from knowing God because... That way, when you do go in a relationship, you are fully aware of what you bring to the table and you are aware of what you need from that other person. Right. When we don't know ourselves, a lot of the times we just take the crumbs. And, and we can lash out in the terms of like, well, this person isn't meeting my needs. Mm-hmm. But if you're not communicating that or if you're not even aware to get to the point where you can communicate, you're at a loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it takes two to tangle. And I think also, you know, a lot of... Um, those like um issues when it comes to you know like being in a relationship and stuff you know when people have a hard time of maybe like you know just waiting or um accepting the crumbs i think a lot of it comes because our true worth and value isn't like founded in christ that's like once your value is founded in who jesus is and like you realize you don't need anybody Mm -hmm. i mean it's nice to have people in your life but if you understand like you know my value is come it comes completely and totally from god then you know it'll be easy to you know just be like okay well this isn't working easier but even easy you can get to a point where like you know if someone decides they don't want to be a part of your life then all right that's okay and you know if you find that person to you know be a part of your life it's Mm -hmm. not like you know there isn't so much pressure because it's just like well you know this person they're not like so much going to i don't know like make my life so much better you're not relying on them to make your life like this extremely great place or whatever because you already have that in god so they're just coming to be a part of what you already have with god right abby um could 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 you circle back to the crumb idea there um that (laughs) if you don't know yourself very well um you can't communicate that to your partner and you settle for crumbs yeah so i guess what i meant by that is when you don't um know what your needs are when you're not centered in god and the identity and the value that he gives to us Mm -hmm. we um we have this scarcity mindset that well um i'll just take what i can get and a lot of the times that mindset attracts vultures uh, vultures because they know how to spot that and that can lead you to unsavory relationships Mm -hmm. that can then cause trauma (laughs) and uh, take you back to square one instead of not even square one before square one because now you're at square one with trauma that you wouldn't have had otherwise Uh, yeah yeah so knowing yourself and your worth allows you to not only be able to express yourself authentically and integrally to who you are and then that allows you to then um know when the other person is let's say not giving you what is essential to you but sometimes it's just the basic things of respect and time and you know and uh you can set boundaries boundaries that help you just 
Agreed. keep that standard of what it is you require. Mike, um, can you talk a little bit about doing the work and when it comes to dealing with your past? Sure, bud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bud? <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, so like when it comes to dealing with your past, there's a lot of... Uh, there can be for a lot of people... Um, like trauma and stuff like that. And personally, you know, I think, you know, I know I've dealt with trauma and I, I think everyone has dealt with some types of trauma. There's no one on this planet who hasn't been touched by some sort of sin, trauma because, yeah. you know, we just live in sin. And unfortunately, you know, it's just something that we have to go through. Yeah. And God told us that, you know, like this world isn't going to be, mm -hmm. you know, like rainbows always happy and, and always sunshine. rainbows and yeah. sunshine you know even especially if you decide to follow christ like mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times stuff gets even worse because satan he doesn't want you to follow christ so he's just yeah. going to make it even harder um but one of the points i want to look at is you know how can we avoid um letting trauma guide our decisions um when it comes to dating and in life and you know, I, I kind of want to look at that question a little bit different um, because I think okay. a lot of us, we kind of look at trauma and we want to kind of like push it away. Mm -hmm. um, we want to kind of just forget about it. But, you know, I don't think that's necessarily the right approach. You mean because it head on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think, first of all, you know, you, we have to just, you know, we kind of talked about the sin, mm -hmm. you know, and why, you know, everybody is touched by it because you know we just live in this world um but you know when it comes to like addressing trauma like how do you not let it like rule your life and and your past and stuff like that but i would say um there's no way to get around that because our past influences the person that we are today Agreed. but how you let it influence you is the real question like in a negative way or, or in, in a, a positive, positive way, way. You know, and when I read the Bible, there's many examples and there's one in particular in Deuteronomy right before the Israelites went into the promised land. Mm. Um, God told them, well, he was, you know, he, he, he in Deuteronomy, you know, you get the, the, uh, the law told over again and everything like that. Um, but then right before they went into the promised land, he told them, hey, don't forget that you were slaves. OK, and they were slaves mm, in that's Egypt. That's weird. Yeah. OK. And so there's a lot of trauma that came with from that like there's a lot of baggage now we know the story like a lot of like the people who came out of egypt they had died off but caleb and and uh joshua were still there right and moses was still there and and so god told all of them don't forget that you were slaves and the reason he told them that mm -hmm. if you read the verse was so that they could um be better or treat people better or so that they could learn to or remain humble and, and realize their need for god right so like, obviously, you don't want to just dwell on the things that happened to you, like, in the past. You don't want to just, like, you know, kind of just, like, always be thinking about it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you want like, how a girl those, treated you yeah. or how your you parents to, neglected you, you or like, et cetera, you know, et cetera. Constantly rewind that in your head. Yeah. But I think it's important to, like, accept those things and use it to, like, positively impact your life because mm -hmm. you know god could stop all these things from happening to us if he wanted to and i'll get back to and that a later, lot of the times he does a we lot don't of times even we does. don't even know the things he stops I, I, but, I was just gonna say that like many more than we would care yeah. or, or, or than we could name yeah but i mean we still go through things though that's the yeah. that's, that's right. the, the yeah. issue mm -hmm. um, and i would like to say that i think um trauma like you said we can't forget it um that's the easy thing to do just push it off um like they say those who forget their past are doomed to repeat it and that's what we see in the bible and <laughs> right, right. one of the ways that i believe that we can address the trauma so that we don't forget it and don't repeat it is um by accepting it in the sense that like this happened to me like kind of like stepping out kind of like in a third person like seeing back like this happened to me like but i survived and here well, i am here. and 
giving yourself grace because a lot of the times you say, man, I should have done this or this, like especially if it's um, something that happened, like for example, like a sexual assault or something unsavory Some, that yeah, happened. Yeah, some way I like, could have avoided it Why or didn't something? I do this? Why didn't I do that? Like you just give yourself grace that like at that time I did what I thought was best. Mm. And a lot of the times that's what stops us, I think, from getting over trauma is the whole of like what I should have done and thinking, oh man, like I didn't do the right thing. But more of like just giving ourselves grace of like it happened to me. Yes, I am stronger because of it and I need to forgive this person. And yeah, you won't forget about it. But And sometimes I need to forgive can, myself Yeah, exactly. for making and I just want to say this before we go any further, because um, I think a big aspect of dealing with trauma, uh, one of the bigger aspects of dealing with trauma is over is, is often overlooked. Um, and that is um, your your family and your friends. Like, you know, we feel like dealing with trauma is always like kind of on you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But. I think a lot of the reasons why people struggle with it is because they don't have that support that system. support system. And you kind of were talking about like how uh, Ab like you'd mentioned like Abby should man up or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big thing, like because in society, especially for men and women, too, because, you know, women, they go through a lot of, you know, emotional uh, trauma, like physical, sexual trauma, abuse and stuff like that. And they don't say anything about it for years later right because they're scared and it's embarrassing Shame. ashamed and i think a lot of that is <laughs> a lot of that is our fault you know like as a society you know we we don't we don't like um make i guess it a safe place mm -hmm. for people to come in bye benny benny wanted to say something <laughs> but that's, that's okay <laughs> um we we kind of make it uh hard for people to uh come out and 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 just be you know open with and, and i'm not saying you want to be open with it but a lot of people aren't comfortable with you know reaching out for that help especially among men yeah like you'd be surprised like they say one in four women or one in three women have dealt with like some type of trauma like that physical sexual or mm -hmm. emotional abuse but men have dealt with it or, or, or every one out of four men has also dealt with that. It's really high still. But yet, but yet, and I have some numbers here. I know y'all know me and my numbers. Um, only forty nine percent of men actually tell someone about it. So That's, half of the seems men, a little high. They okay. go through these things and they suppress it, and then only four per, four or five percent of men actually are in support groups to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So most people who even go through this stuff, they feel like they have nowhere to go. And that's on us, you know, a and society. so we have we have a big part to play in people overcoming their trauma. Mm -hmm. And that's a biblical concept principle. Mm -hmm. like, it, uh, God says what a, a cord of three is not easily broken. A right? threefold mm -hmm. cord. A threefold yeah. cord. I think it's Ecclesiastes, right? We'll have the uh, show notes for this later, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the show notes. They'll have all the verses. Uh, we're not just saying. I, I'm, I'm not just saying stuff. Um, and then he also says um, uh, that. Uh, what does he say? He says iron sharpens iron, right? And then he says, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so God, like he wants us to, to be together. Like mm -hmm. he wants us to use each other as a support system to lean on. Yes. All right. And I think one way that we can provide that, create more of those safe places um, is by educating ourselves more in the society that it's not about fixing other people's problems. A lot of the times, most people just need to be heard. Um, but a lot of the times, we ourselves, we ask people, how are you? But we don't really want to know the answer, you know? So Has anyone more, ever actually like told you how they were when you asked that? I mean, they always say good. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. And a lot of times, we find out these issues until it's like too late. Yeah, so like that. Like people... You know, they do things that are unhealthy or like they get into an unhealthy practice or they wound up killing themselves. Mm. And we're just like super surprised. Like, yeah. I thought everything was OK. Yeah. And so like that's on us. Like, 
I'm, I mean, I'm saying it's completely on us, but it takes it, a village. It, it, takes, it a takes a village, village, right? It takes a family, a community. And, you know, I've said it, you know, many times, like, first of all, you know, like relying on God, you know, that has been my like main source of comfort, especially in times of like, uh, like stress and like, um, adversity, especially in the military. Like I, yeah, told you, yeah. I almost went crazy myself. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and you know, but knowing that God was there and then also knowing that my family, there are people that loved me and care for me, you know, that was a big source of strength. Like I would not be where I am today without them. What and, would you say to somebody who's like um stuck? Like what would be actionable steps? Like for someone who, for example, um hasn't or can't get over like a like a heartbreak or something. Like what would be some actionable steps that they can take to not be stuck in that past? Like, we were kind of talking about it already. Um, I think, like, first it just comes to, like, acceptance, you know? At least when I've been heartbroken, and there's different levels to it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I've never, I haven't been, like, in a long-term relationship, you know? And for people who've been <laughs> married and, you know, have come out of that, that's, like, really tough, right? You know, like, I'm not going to try and discredit that. And I think that's another thing. Like, we need to, you know, accept you know people's past and mm -hmm. accept the pain mm -hmm. that they're feeling and understand like and empathize with them i think a lot of times we just try to like overlook it as like yeah. oh it's insignificant but jesus he said he counts the hairs on our head so like mm -hmm. wow yeah. you know even the little things that bother us he's concerned with mm -hmm. so you know i feel like we need to be more like that it's a whole hymn does jesus care you know mm -hmm. I, like, I, I like exactly. it a lot exactly yeah. so i would i would say like for me personally um just like well, first of all, time heals all wounds. So, <laughs> like, you just mm -hmm. gotta have to, you know, just accept it and, you know, like, realize that your value isn't tied to anybody on this planet. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like, who the person is. It doesn't matter, like, your history or past. Your value is in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, this world Amen. is not nice. It's not good. It's not fair. There's a lot of people that are mean like and we've made mistakes ourselves right mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so we, i think a lot of people um struggle with it that um including myself with just like accepting like you know who you are accepting where we are in this world and um accepting that these things happen yeah. so i think that's like a big first step true i um that you just said acceptance and it made me think of the aa prayer it says god give me the strength to change the things i can change and, and the humility to uh, change the things i can't and to ex to accept the things i can't and the humility I'll, to know, know the, the difference. difference so like a lot of the times our problems come down to that we don't accept what is going on around us mm. and um i think like for example like someone dealing with heartbreak um an actionable step to um, deal with it is to uh, sit down with yourself and um, kind of write like what is it about this person that makes you feel like the heartbreak like mm -hmm. um, you're gonna meet other people but at the end of the day like that person wasn't for you like you gotta you you gotta realize that that person wasn't the one if it were he were the one or she were the one it would have worked out like but we gotta stop a lot of the times we um we hype things up so much in our head. And when they're gone, we think our world is shattered. So it's a lot because of... Because we, we often then create illusions of people. Exactly. And not, and not fall in love with an actuality of a human oh, being. I that castle building. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why I... I mean, I recently told a friend, I was like, you know, I'm not really a fan of... Um, online friendships or texting friendships like i need to smell touch and see my friends mm. because the actuality of being in their presence tells you a lot more than what the written word via text or what video can tell you yeah. being in the presence actually changes you i mean i don't know that's just me yeah um, and um i guess something i wanted to share sometimes for me i know i struggled um so I've never had a like a formal boyfriend before, like, you know, like Michael, I've gone on dates and stuff. But um, for the longest time, I would always be like, why have I never had a boyfriend? Like I would look down on myself as to like, oh, my gosh, like all my friends, like they have boyfriends, they're getting married. Husbands, but like yeah. here I am, 26 year old, ne never had a first boyfriend or whatever. But then now I look back and it was like 
I was in a woest me attitude. Mm. Whereas like I can look back and be like, I have something from that that none of y'all have. I still have, I don't have that trauma you guys have from all those 15 boyfriends you had in high school. You know what it's I'm true. saying? Like, I still believe men are still good. Like, right. I, like, I didn't deal with childish dudes, like, playing with my emotions. Like, right. like I still got that piece of me that you lost. So, in the right. sense of, like, seeing it as a weakness, I see it as a strength. I think good call, to, uh, where, where, Good sorry, go call. Go ahead, Mike. No, I was saying, I think we need to, like, uh, <laughs> um, I think that that needs to be like expressed more you know like we always like being single or even being like a virgin is like looked down upon today where I and feel, it's not and, well it, it shouldn't be i'm it just saying be. like especially as christians like even as christians we like are scared to say that i feel like that should be something that's like you know core to who we are i mean it is like you know preserving yourself for marriage mm -hmm. like abstaining because biblical like dating bibl is like not biblical like at least in the sense that it is that we see a lot today yes. right you know like dating with intentionality mm -hmm. or pursuing a woman or a relationship with intentionality is the biblical thing not just like casual stuff yeah right? and i feel like a lot of us we are afraid to speak up about that or let people know you mm -hmm. know but on the opposite side people are always talking about how much girlfriends they've had yeah. how much people they've slept with and stuff like that but they're not That's talking about all count. the <laughs> yeah all the issues they're getting <laughs> every time seems, they break up with someone and, well See, they're not going to say that. But that seems to be like the like um, what we pride ourselves on as a society and even in like some of our church groups, you know, like it's it's like looked down upon to, to, to not have been with someone. And that's that's wrong. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to say about trauma, a lot of the times real, real trauma, it's in our unconscious and we don't know it. Hmm. And um the Bible talks about how, you know, God knows all things. And in in Psalms 139, 23 to, through 24, it says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of the everlasting. So, yes, we may have traumas in our unconscious that we don't know about, but we can pray to God that he searches us, that he brings to light those traumas that he wants us to work on. Because there are some traumas that I think there are our unconscious to save ourselves. Because our brain, its only purpose is to keep you alive. And a lot of the times it puts stuff in your subconscious because you know it's going to kill you. Mm. So by praying to God, you know, search me, God, like know my ways, show me what I can work on. Um, he can bring up those traumas and through through his help and through seeking professional help, you can work on those traumas in an effective way so that you and can use those as a, you can use those experiences from a point of strength instead of from a point of weakness. As which is how you want to approach dating in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I think you kind of answered the question I was going to ask already. Like, <laughs> what, what question <laughs> well, were you going to ask? I was going to ask, like, you know, why does God allow us to go through traumas? Like, God always talks about how much he loves us. And, you know, he loves everyone. But, you know, specifically to those who have professed to follow him, you know, why does God allow these things to happen? Why do you think? If someone asked you that, what would you say? I mean, I have two answers to that. The it's first, a loaded question. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, 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 so the first one would be, like, I feel that this is just part of that that god just it, it's just part of the sinful world uh mm -hmm. it, it comes with the territory um and he can't keep us from everything that's harming us and the reason i would say that is because as as we all know that all things work together for good, for good. to those who love, love god that. and to those who are called according to his purpose, purpose. and otherwise us um a lot of times we don't mature we don't we aren't the person that we're supposed to be or even meant to be because we don't put ourselves out there or encounter the hard stuff and like just kind of like w with exercise you have to go through pain in order to grow that muscle yeah the same applies emotionally and internally as well i feel Mm -hmm. And not, and, and and I'm not saying that all pain, that all heart pain or all emotional pain, uh, what do you call it, is conducive to, you know, growth in that way, but it can be placed in God's hands. I would, I, 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 well, I, I, I would even say. to relate it to God, 
God himself said that he became one of us and suffered like us so he could better know how to serve us as a God. Yeah. As, yeah. And, and I will get, we will put that verse in, um, <laughs> and then in the and, show notes. And I mean, I think also God gives us choice, you know, um, there's so many things he could stop from happening. And there's a lot of things that he does stop by his grace and his mercy. But at the end of the day, we are very stubborn people. And that's true. A lot of the times God gives us warnings of different things. And what do we do? We step into that. We step into them or we try to convince God that we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, yeah, he could be like, stop us completely. It's like, you're not going there. But at the end of the day, he loves us and he gives us that choice. So then once we do get in it and we do mess up, then he works everything for good when we come back to him so like he's like he's not gonna be like i told you so because i love that about him he he doesn't need to tell us that like we, we already we know already, we, we just saw that <laughs> yeah and a lot of the it times was within ourselves we don't need to tell people i told you so even though we love saying it right like when someone does something mm -hmm. we didn't we told them not to do we say i told you so it's like that person already knows and sure they, they feel <laughs> a lot Some of the times they do, do. i mean unless they're think like they narcissistic or like you know sociopathic like a lot of the times they know no, they messed up. Very true. So I think it comes down to choice that God gives us choices, and because of sin, we make bad choices sometimes that lead to traumatic experiences. There's a saying that life is the best teacher. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we just we just have to experience things for ourselves because you know we're ignorant about a lot of things, we're naive a lot yeah. about a lot of things and how the world works. Mm -hmm. And the only way to learn about it because you know you can tell someone that. Um, that you shouldn't like drink and drive you know yeah and they were like oh i've done this like before it's okay and you can keep telling them that but they're never gonna stop until they actually unfortunately hurt themselves which is unfortunate which is unfortunate hey doc um how about when it comes to relationships so we talked a little bit about doing the work internally we talked a little bit about you know dealing with your past um what like what is some of the work that we can do when it comes to our family and friends so i think that um all these three topics of internally trauma relationships they're all co connected right mm -hmm. so like it's mm -hmm. not just one step focus on this completely it's like everything is moving together um at one time right. um but specifically when re with relationships um your family affects the way you see the world your cosmovision of life especially from your parents you get that like a lot of the until you start learning and and you start developing your own right, thoughts right what your parents teach you is law you know what right. i mean that um, is your reality yeah so like your family your friends um a lot of how they treat you is how you learn to see the world so it is in these relationships that a lot of the times we s develop patterns, um, whether it be good patterns or bad patterns, like patterns of abuse, bad communication, right. or things like that. So when it comes to like when you're single and you're pre getting prepared to date, um, I think one thing you can start looking at is your familiar pattern, familial patterns, um, whether it be with your family, like your mom or your dad individually or your siblings, um, and kind of just put it like I love to say a lot of things like put them down on paper, like mm -hmm. it just makes it real and not only see it as because this person does this, I do this. But a lot of the times the patterns we develop, we play into them. Um, so that person is doing something, but we are also doing something that has developed this pattern. So we have to acknowledge that we have a role in this. And um, it's actually an exercise that I did the other day with myself. Um, I'm reading the book, um, like I said, calling in the one before. And it's talking about these patterns. And it talks about how, like, for example, your pattern of like, nobody ever listens to me or nobody ever cares, right? And then it talks about, well, how do you play into that? Well, because it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, then you, you write down, well, 
when I feel hurt, instead of telling people, I just go to myself. Like, I just go hide. So then you yourself are playing into this pattern. Mm -hmm. So nobody's ever going to, like, you know, help you no, out right. if you never talk. So just, like, you know, um, starting to see those patterns in your family and how you play a role into them, then you can start actively working on them. Where it's like, well, if... I don't want this pattern to continue. I need to make a change. And by putting it on paper, you can start to see um, what it is you have to do. And you can kind of like tell your brain to do it. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of the reel that you shared with me the other day where um, it's like, you know, like uh, I think it was a chick who was talking. She's like, she's like, honey, he's not your type. He's your pattern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, it's like, oh, well, my type is bad girls who, you know, um, yeah. or whatever. Um, but it, it uh, could be just a type or as you say a pattern that a me, pattern. that I saw at home or that I, you know, encountered somewhere else that I'm just perpetuating that you in play one way. Into. Or, Not exactly. necessarily that you're fully percent guilty. Like, for example, mm -hmm. like if something abu someone abuses you, like they got a big role in that right but like um in your choices right so like it's like if you didn't have a mommy and you start looking for mommies that's not necessarily a type it's just you're trying to you know feel that pattern. yeah and i mean they say that um what is it the saying like tell me <laughs> tell me who your friends are <laughs> <And I'll> <laughs> mike you're gonna learn spanish one way or the other <laughs> <laughs> The saying is, like, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. So, um... You are the company you keep. I think that's... Exactly. The, Eng you. the English version. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shout so, out to Mike. So, <laughs> taking <laughs> inventory of our friendships, and um, just trying to live an integral life of, on, like, who you want to be, and setting those boundaries, and by being more intentional on that, some friends will go will leave. Because that's true. Some of them will just want you to be a doormat instead of voicing out your opinions. You know, that's not a true friend. So, Some will egg you on to make the bad mistakes, to mm -hmm. sleep with that girl, to, to, you know, to drink that alcohol, to exactly. do, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, if you really want to be the person who you want to be, mm -hmm. that's going to attract the person who you want to attract. You got to make changes. And a lot of the times, not, not all the times, but there will be times where you know friendships will have to be sacrificed mm -hmm. at the altar of a better you yeah and i think a lot of uh like our habits and stuff we don't even realize that they're even there you know god designed us like amazing like that because you know i can't remember when i ever tried to learn english i just remember just i just always remember talking english like i never right, took right. an english speaking yeah. class yeah. i never took duolingo when i was a baby <laughs> <laughs> but i just somehow know it yeah. And that's just because I was just around my parents every day, and mm -hmm. I just listened to them talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just you just mimic. I it. just somehow learned it exactly. <laughs> so you know, I think that just goes with a lot of you know other stuff as well. You know, just you know like habits you have that you don't even realize are there. So that kind of goes back to what we were saying before. You know, if there's some bad things there, mm -hmm. you gotta like be intentional, and I think a lot of that goes into looking who you're hanging out with or who you're spending most of your time with or you know sometimes it has to be your family as well yeah. you know you love them you know you, you might have like some habits that you picked up or some mm -hmm. um character issues because our parents aren't perfect our family isn't yeah, perfect nobody's perfect you know and so it's important to even look at you know your family like if yeah. you know you're a very argumentative person maybe there's someone in your family like that <laughs> mostly you know yeah. hey doc um just a kind of, kind of a random question you know how mike was, or how you were talking about how you are the company that you keep um if you had a girlfriend who brought a guy you know who presented a guy to you and um he's obviously you know let's call it not in her league or not not conducive to her in, in a healthy way uh how would you address that um, I am a very straightforward person. My friends all know that. And if the guy is not good for her, um, I would tell her right away or in the sense of um, when when it inevit inevitably happens that they <laughs> complain about something that is going on, I, I kind of like reverted back to them. Like, 
in the sense of like, well, you knew this already, like, but you accepted it. So why are you complaining about it? So like in the sense mm. of trying to bring them conscious to like all these bad things and whether you can, you can accept it or you can leave it. So like through conversation, I try to gear them towards making a choice because it's not up to me, right? I can just tell them, oh, he's a bad guy. But a lot of the times you tell somebody he's not good for you. They're probably going to go 10 times harder towards the person but rather making it about them. It's like, what do you want? Are you going to keep perpetuating this? I feel like I've seen more um, more benefit when it comes to my friends. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have, you have a pretty good uh, roster of friends. So I feel like they, they would make the, like the right decision regardless. And I would hope that you would make the right decision too and that they call you out on it. Yeah, I, um, I like to think I have a very diverse set of friends. Um, from all walks of life. Wait, you guys, you guys do you have all met a friends know them. each other? All my friends know each other? Do they? No. Or are there like different friend groups that one knows but the other one doesn't? I have... Like, you know how, how like, others are running... Like, I have my running... university peeps. Like, they kind of know each other. Uh -huh. But they're not like close. Mm -hmm. Um, But then there's other... Like, for example, like from high school, nobody knows them. Oh, that's true. Or like, yeah. um, just, you know, adult friends. So, yeah, they don't all know each other, but if you got them all in a room and you asked them to define me, they would all say the same thing. Um, yeah, she's the straightforward one. Okay, so now that we've established or we already know that our relationships are friends, um, influence. influence who we are and what we do. And who we date. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked a little bit about patterns and how we play a role into a lot of them um would you guys know of like a pattern that you've seen in your life and what role you've played in it like for example i'll give one of mine um a lot of the times i think that people don't listen to me or like don't know what's going on and um a lot of the but then it's like my role in that is i don't actively share so how would uh, someone know what's going on if i don't actively share? communicate it so that's how my role into how would I play into this pattern. So do you guys can, off the top of your head know like of a pattern in your life that and how you play into it? It doesn't have to be a negative thing. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. Hold on, I got to think about this. Um, a pattern in my life and how I've played into it. It takes some thinking. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of patterns in my life, patterns in my life. Um, well, like for me, kind of going back to... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, like going back to like um, the less thing mm -hmm. with me. Um, and this is just solely like on me. Like, yeah. I always just found myself whenever I like got like down into that side, I would always like trick myself into being like oh i'll be okay this time i don't have to set my guard up or <laughs> you know i can go on this computer right mm -hmm. here by mm -hmm. myself in the dark no one's here right right you know, nothing's yeah. gonna happen and i mean usually you know not every time i'm by myself on the computer i'm like looking at something <laughs> bad i'm just saying but <laughs> i thought you were gonna say not every time i open my computer i'm by myself i'm like <laughs> <laughs> but i'm just saying like you know, there's things that I do that definitely send me down the path, and it's just like the creeping compromise thing mm -hmm. that we talk that um, we've heard about. You know, I take one step, and then I'm like, "Oh, this is fine," or you know, I'll just go by myself somewhere, and then my mind just floats, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm I'm fine. I'm not gonna like do anything bad." And then I just I just I usually fail after that. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, a pattern for me. Um, so that's a pattern, just being. Um, like alone and just you know doing things that i know so when you're feeling like you said that whole lust thing came from loneliness right mm. or, so when you're feeling lonely sometimes you be alone and that leads to yeah opening the computer or opening my mind exactly Ooh, exactly just, so yeah uh i'm being real here I'm transparent darn right i love that um for me so i mentioned earlier that um i 
I mean, I don't, I, that I had a, a perfectionism problem. And I mean, to kind of rephrase that, it's not necessarily a perfectionism problem, but I would say that I'm, I'm so used to excellence and I realize that that sounds a little bit uh, like conceited, but, I, but I, like sometimes I'm just so used to things going exactly how I want them to go and me and them going really good the first time that when I do a project and it involves other people, I often, I sometimes complain like, man, these people can't carry, like I have to solo this mission for us. But in the reality is, is that I just don't trust them enough to do something that I know that they can do. So for example, this podcast, I know how to manage social media and I know how to manage it well. But I was like, hey, doc, you got to do this because this is something that I just can't do. Mm -hmm. Um, I could have done this podcast by myself. But it wouldn't have been as good. Let's be real, Mike. No, no, it, would, as good. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have been as full as it is with having you guys on. And that's something that um, I had like, that's just a pattern that I had to break of the uh, of not having to solo everything of sharing that load and trusting other people that they can carry too. that makes sense. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like <sighs> there's a lot of ways in which um, we can take into account the things that are going on in our lives internally and really put in that work and tackle it head on so that we can approach dating from a confident mindset um, instead of uh, like, well, I don't know if the, how this is going to turn out or if this girl rejects me or doesn't give me her number, um, I'm going to crumble. Mm. And that's just not the case. So, you know, doing the work now is going to set us up to be better partners when we, you know, do find someone when yeah. we do encounter that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So, uh, <laughs> Mike, what would you say is a takeaway for you? Like some final advice that you would give to to somebody of doing the work when it comes to their mental health? Um. Well, first and foremost, rely on God. Like that is like yeah. the best and biggest thing you can do. Like allow yourself to come to that place where your only value your only self-worth and your happiness isn't tied to anybody on this planet um, but it's tied to like god who loves you more than anybody who wants to save you who wants you to have all these things that you want who wants you to have that family and the relationship and everything you know he wants you to have those things but you know first and foremost you know you just have to trust him you have to you know rely um on him and be you know, comfortable just being with him. I think a lot of that trauma and a lot of like that anxiety and that loneliness goes away once you realize that. And then also to just, you know, um, rely on your support groups as well. You know, God, he wants us to be, he said, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves. He wants us to be together. He wants us to, you know, um, lean on, you know, each other when, you know, we come to those places of, you know sadness and those places of adversity and despair and despair you know we also mm -hmm. have a role to play in how people deal with their trauma and deal with um you know their issues like like that is the actual like big thing to god like it's actually a sin to <laughs> um I, I have to put this in the, the notes as well but you know mm -hmm. it is a sin to like leave people when you know they need help like god like if you pat we saw the good samaritan Thankfully, yeah the good samaritan i was just gonna you know, say that if you walk over someone and they're in need like that is a sin you know if, if you turn your back to your brother like or your sister or whatever that that is a sin that god doesn't like that he wants us to look out for each other so that's you know um i guess two of the top things i would say what about you doc um to piggyback off of mike first and foremost you know god is i think the biggest part of doing the work because he does 99 percent of the soul work amen and to that we we gotta trust in him and his leading i would also say that um for those of you that are doing the work or haven't even started doing that work, um, to give yourself grace, um, to that it's it's your pace. That you know, yes, you want to be in a relationship, and there are things you got to work on. But 
maybe you're not ready to work on them and that's okay like work on what you can today like you were saying those baby steps um Mm -hmm. one thing you can do today i think is huge and um just um don't compare yourself to anybody else's mental health journey on working on things is you they have their own demons they don't talk about so we can never do that comparing and at the end of the day it's all about trusting that you're gonna make make it uh, through the end of the tunnel like it's gonna get hard and some things might be easy to overcome than others but you are strong enough because god gives you strength amen to overcome those things so just you know trust the process trust god um seek that help if you need it from a professional who can guide you towards adequate steps you can take um, from a healthy way instead of an unhealthy way, which is our tendency, and just live one day at a time. I like it. I'd, and I would add to both of you the fact that um, I feel like commit to the process. Um, commit to a better you um, because that's something that you would want from your partner. And that's something that you should want from yourself as well. Um, So commit to the baby steps. And even if you fail, don't think, okay, well, you know, I, you know, fell into a a hurtful pattern that, you know, now that disqualifies me from dating or from finding the girl of my Mm -hmm. dreams. That's not necessarily the case. Um, You know, we may stumble, but it's not about the stumbling. Um, the, the the part about stumbling and falling is whether you get back up or not. Mm-hmm. So the key is to get back up and to commit doing those steps so that, um, again, you can experience a better you and you can live with a better you because you got to live with yourself 100% of the time. The time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, I need a break. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's interesting cause, like, because a lot of people take breaks from themselves, quote unquote, through drugs. <laughs> Through narcotics, through like alcohol, go to sleep. through <laughs> whatever, um, and e- e- even through mindless scrolling, just yeah. just kind of t- just so, so switch off their brain. But um, I would say to that, you know, just trust trust that God has got you, yeah. um, and that those baby steps you don't have to walk them alone. Mm-hmm. Um, everything that I've gone through, that Abby's gone through, that Michael has gone through, we haven't had to do it alone and you don't have to do it alone either. Yeah. So just make just, ju- just make sure and realize that, you know, God's got your hand more mm-hmm. than you think he does and that he's going to carry you through. And it's, it's a lifelong journey. Um, don't think it's a whole checklist. So, well, I need to work on this, 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 and then I'll be ready. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, you know, you work on it, and you might not reach perfection and you might meet that other person the goal is like matthew hussey always says happy enough to work through your things where you are happy enough where you are more confident enough not just full on like i'm perfect now i'm ready for a relationship (laughs) it's more of just like continuously working so that when that other person does show up you are able to welcome them because you have created space and then they can join you in the journey. Yeah. Um, I, I would also add to that um, to um, seek feedback from your friends and family. Um, so, I mean, yesterday was my birthday. I'm a full 28 years old now. And we were at dinner. And one thing I asked my family was, in what ways have I changed in the last year? Um, and some were good. And particularly one was bad. <laughs> from my sister-in-law um but just getting that feedback and just um you know which one (laughs) um reflecting and tracking your progress is going to help motivate you as you move forward as well so yeah i think that's good mike how about you uh, close us out in prayer and pray that God can help us through our mental health journey in preparation for finding the one that he has for us. Okay. Dear Lord, um, thank you again for allowing us to have this opportunity to be able to, you know, come together as friends and, or in, and with um, a special guest um, that we have here today as well, whose name I am uh, forgetting right now. Um, 
Angelica. Angelica. I was going to say Alex, but no. Angelica. <laughs> Angelica. Thank you for, um, you know, her being here as well. And, you know, I just uh, want us to, you know, always remember that we can come to you um, for any thing the lord for any traumas we've had um, help us to remember that we're not alone and that we don't need to um feel like we're missing out on something we don't need to feel that we're insignificant or that um we're not good enough or Mm -hmm. anything like that even if we have uh, mistakes in our past that you know have caused us uh, pain or people in our lives who have caused us pain to lord our worth and value comes solely from you mm-hmm. help us to not compare ourselves to anyone and help us to you know just always put um all our worth in you and you know so when that person comes or when the opportunity for whatever um you're going to bring into our life comes lord we can um accept it and you know, continue to, um, you know, be uh, with you and grow closer to you, Lord. And so Amen. we don't have to feel like uh, there's any pressure or anything like that. We can just have a peace of mind. Uh, so help us to always just have that peace of mind and be with our families and friends. Help us to be better friends as well Amen. and better family members, Lord, because we're all part of this process together. We're all um, working together to, um, you know, eventually what the main goal is you know um earn salvation or not earn salvation but you know accept salvation and and Mm. uh, be able to see you again Mm. so that's what this is all about and just uh, all the listeners and the people who have uh, been encouraged by what we're saying lord help us to oh be with them as well and help us to continue to be a good light you know we're not you know by any means you know some like perfect people or you know theologians or you know people with all the answers you know we're just regular people but you know you've given us a platform to be able to share so help us to um you know use this platform to do good in jesus name amen amen